Okay, today at this work study, we're going to talk about side by side vehicles in Danville. Town manager and town attorney. Mr. President, if you recall correctly, at our last work study, we kind of touched on the subject. We were running out of time. So we never really um, finished our discussion to see what you guys want to do, what your wishes are, uh, so that I can. Um, we can have council draft the proper ordinance uh, with the wording that you request. Anybody want to start? I'll start, if you don't mind, Mr. President. Go ahead. Uh, I started I, to look your way. <laughs> I, would, I, would like to, uh, I would like to see uh, legal counsel uh, draft a, um, an ordinance that would uh, allow side-by-sides to um, uh, be used in the same fashion that uh, golf carts are currently in the town of Danville. Do you have any thoughts? I, I'm okay with it, too. Okay, my feelings are the side-by-sides, what I'm talking about, that is, is gators and, and things like that. They get boxed in. They got doors on them. But not razors, those things that go 70, 80 miles an hour. Uh, I don't know if there's a category or what they call them, but uh, I just think we're asking for trouble if we put them on the highway. But the regular side-by-sides, uh, I don't have a problem with. So I, I think that those would not be able to be on the highway. I mean, I know they'd be able to cross at 90-degree angles, and they also have to abide by the you know, same speed limits as an ordinary vehicle. I mean, I understand, because other vehicles could go faster than the posted speed limit. You know, and the razors could too, but they also should you know, maybe abide by the <clears throat> traffic laws. So the, the one thing that I want to make sure of is that when we're talking about razors, those are the specific proprietary brand of Polaris. Yes. Um, there are a whole kind of class of those types of vehicles. So the Yamaha has their own. Uh, I think Arctic Cat has their own. When we're saying razors, we're talking about the class, right? Not just the Polaris version, because if we're just signaling out the Polaris one, then we have some issues that we would be dealing with because you're setting a separate standard for like vehicles. Yes, that, that's what I was saying. I don't know if there's a class, but if there is a class for those type of uh, uh, sports vehicles, um, I don't think that we should allow them on our highways. Yeah, so we'll have to work with that language a little bit because technically they are still grouped under the off-road vehicles, and so they would fit in with the rest of the allowances that we would be making um, for this, but we, we can probably find a category type of situation um, if we're concerned with that. And, and with the speed limit, I'm at, I've got a list of questions. Caitlin put it down a list of questions that I went through uh, to answer. Um, we need to consider whether you want to set a separate speed limit than uh, the speed limits that the state has put on for mo cars. You do have the ability to set a different speed limit for off-road vehicles um, operating within the town, but you just have to post it, the speed limit, because it doesn't become effective until it's posted. So on the county's um, ordinance, they have them included in there, don't they? Or, the, the county? Yeah, they do. Um, I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, included in your packets. Um. So what's prompted this a little bit is the county has an ordinance they passed. And we are looking at absorbing some of that ordinance into our town. Some of it or all of it. Yeah, so when I look at the counties, it doesn't ha seem to have any carve out for something equivalent to the razor. Um, I don't recall and I don't think I saw the county where they set a speed limit um, for the off-road vehicle. So that's, that's up to you guys. Yeah, they, uh, the counties says that they'll operate at a reasonable and safe speed and obey all traffic rules. Um, I don't know how you enforce reasonable and safe speed. I yeah, was a policeman for 20 years. I, I, that's a tough one to go. So, Well, you just make them follow the roads, the speeds on right. the roads. That's right. all. Well, that, and that way, that would, that would uh, <clears throat> remain consistent for our officers to be able to enforce whether it's a vehicle or off-road vehicle yeah. 
you know, it would be consistent. Okay, I have something. I don't have a problem with these off-road vehicles being on our streets since we already allow golf carts and bicycles, which can go faster than 30 miles an hour if you're, you know, an avid bicyclist. Um, my, my worry is that these off-road vehicles will be off-road, you know, in the mud, and the mud drives on their tires, and then they come into town and the mud drops off onto the street. Now, I was married to a guy who, who had, um, you know, excavating equipment, and he wasn't allowed to, to drop mud on the street anywhere, even right outside the job site. So I think there should, we should, you know, at least think about that. Chris. Greg, when you said um, similar to our golf cart ordinance, are you talking like making the rules so where they can't drive down 36, but they can only cross it? Correct. Yeah. I mean, it would it would eliminate 39. It would eliminate 36. Because I mean, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think that the state allows them on on those highways anyway. That, that's correct. The yeah. state statute already prohibits yeah, so, it. So so highway or state highway <clears throat> would, would be excluded, you know, from that. But but can cross perpendicular. Per right. Perpendicularly. Right. And the other bit. thing, the other thing on these vehicles that we cannot do, similar to the golf carts, is we cannot enforce a uh, registration fee. Uh, that's that's by state statute. They don't allow us to impose that because they're already registered, registered through the Bureau of Motor Vehicles sure. as an off-road vehicle. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, you're absolutely right. And, and but one way, if you're looking to get some sort of um, enforcement or revenue and since you're losing out on that is if you do pass an ordinance on a speed limit then any violation of that ordinance so long as it is not the state speed limit that's set out there is now an ordinance violation that is written on the town and then paid to the town um, Did we lose the microphone? No, it's still working. It is breaking. Though. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? So, I guess that we're we're seeking consensus. It, it seems that you all agree that the that side by side should be allowed. Um, are you wanting to prohibit a certain class, or do you just want to go ahead and allow, and that they must maintain our current? Our what speed? I was hearing is. We might as well just adopt what the county's put out. Just adopt it as it is. Are we allowed to vote on that today? Anyway. You no, know, but you can grant consensus so that he can move forward and adopting an ordinance that then you would vote on. Do we have a consensus of uh, adopting what the county did? And, and just to be clear, what the county has include they're allowed. These razors are allowed yeah, to be on the I road. I've listened to what they said in that, and it's true. They have a pre speed limit. They better go to the speed limit. We have motorcycles that go 150 miles an hour. They got to follow 40 mile an hour speed limit. Mm -hmm. I hear what Nancy said. Yep, they go in the mud and they'll take it all over the road. What do we do with trucks that do that? If we catch them, we will cite them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've gone off road in my truck and had mud all over the damn thing. <laughs> and then I found me Nancy too. running after me. <laughs> so, Chief, so who is you that? So what do you think? Adopt it the way it is? Well, I, 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 think, I think we have consensus, I mean, to move there, forward. There is a question. Do you want to exclude them or allow them in the park? Allow it. On the paved roads, right? Currently, they don't, none of the golf carts follow any rules, and they're all parking in the grass. So all of these will do the same. <clears throat> they will tear up the grass. So you want us to say no? Wait, 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 wait. So we don't allow the golf carts on the grass. So like if you have a a theater night by the amphitheater, you don't let the we yeah, have I see signage. a lot of them driving around the grass. Do we have signage them. out? Yeah, do we have signage? They're supposed to follow all the same rules as cars. And they don't. What about parking? On the what about trail, they signing? drive all over the place. Gotcha. What about signage? Is there enough? 
I'm sorry. There's no going to get you started. Yeah. It, I, I think it's going to be dangerous for the park. That's the only thing. That's my only concern because I already had uh, like a buggy thing driving through the grass through the park. Yeah, and it probably could fall within this because it had turn signals and everything. Mm. And he was like, oh, I thought we were allowed. I was like, no, you have to follow all the guidelines. <laughs> mm. And then... Where does it stop? And so I don't you're know if you've saying been there that on the, Saturday, but. the county's ordinance allows them to drive on the dirt and the sand and and the grass. I don't. They have to follow all the same as the roads. But the problem is, is because the cars park in the grass at the park, you get that that with this too. But golf carts go, you know, 20 miles an hour. These don't. <laughs> they could. Uh, point well taken. Hmm. Should we maybe look at um, removing both golf carts and um, off-road vehicles from the park, uh, unless unless maybe it's a you know concert or something, or we can designate special parking? Yeah, I think for the enforcement because we don't enforce the parking on the grass it's going to be an impossible task. So you're okay with golf carts in the park on the paved road? On the paved road, yes. Right. It's Following just the, all park, the, the yeah. grass issue. Yeah, but you've because... Been, you've been to the park on a Saturday morning when there's football games going on, right? I have if been If you don't park on the grass, you're not going to watch the Yeah, you're not, gonna, you're not going to get a, find a parking spot, period. Well, it, would there be... Um, uh, if, 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 if golf carts are an issue presently in, in the uh, grass in the park, um, what has your team been doing to I'll say, uh, uh, somewhat enforce that? Have you been? We approach them when we can, but the hard part is the cars do it too. So then it's, I mean, even when Playscape, there's the whole pool park, open, you know, whole pool parking lot open, they park in the grass. So... It's a bigger problem. How, how do you address parking? Is I think parking can be one thing. What about somebody driving a buggy through? We there? approach them. Yeah. Say how, hey, you're how, not supposed to be doing that. How does that, that go? <laughs> not very well. Okay. Hey, they can park here. Okay. No, but driving and parking are two different things. Gotcha. Like if they just curled in and parked there, that would be fine. But no, they drive out. I follow. Around, you know, and that's that's the biggest problem. Is it only takes one kid to pop out from a car. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to highlight that none of these vehicles should be on the grass. They should follow everything like a car. I don't know. <laughs> it's a troubled area for sure. I mean, I don't know how else you can address this other than they follow our, our ordinances and, our, and, and the state laws. I don't know how you, you got, I mean, is we, there any suggestions? We either put it in or we don't put well, it in. Well, I, do we have signage? I've never, I don't recall seeing anything that says no golf carts on grass or no grass okay. and then they that's where they park i've never <laughs> seen i've actually never seen the signs yeah they're all right. that's because okay. they're underneath a parked car <laughs> that happens too they actually park and hit the cars or hit the signs i parked them. next to one of the no parking in the grass signs. yeah, yeah. <laughs> parked in the grass before i think yeah. and we're we are looking at bringing back the posts i don't know have you seen like the new trail we put in we're going to post the middle so that people if they do park they'll park on the outside because the biggest problem with parking is if you park on both sides of the road and there's someone that wants to cross, now the car has no place to veer to miss someone. Mm -hmm. So we need to make it to where you can veer one way to miss the person. And those kids run through those cars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Crosswalks as well. So what's the answer? What's the solution? <laughs> I, I think we have to put it in the ordinance instead of leave it out. <laughs> Is there a specific time, or is there t where there's this is a violation? Because you were talking about Saturdays for football and, and things like that. So is there like a day? Is there prevalent? I would say when sports are going on. It's usually the people who come for the pool. They actually park in the parking lot, <clears throat> the golf carts and stuff. But did, if there's a baseball game. They park yeah. all over the place. Yeah. It's a bigger yeah. problem. But I'm just worried about the speed of those, where a golf cart, you could probably outrun a golf cart <laughs> if you needed to. I'm inclined to not allow the 
faster vehicle, the faster vehicles through there. But well, they have to follow the law. We have speed limit posted in the park. We have signs that say don't park on the grass. We have many, many citizens that need to go, to, it's, that we have to talk to. I still say, well, put it in the ordinance. And if something happens, the policeman has something to work on. We could be a little bit more proactive maybe with Facebook on, hey, these, oh, these are supposed to follow the rules. They shouldn't be out there and maybe take a few pictures. <laughs> Jewel, if I'm not mistaken, we could, in our media blitz of this, we could actually say that if there is continued violations, we can rescind this ordinance. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. I mean, at any time, the council can rescind an ordinance uh, to say, okay, that didn't work. So we we could we can keep that in our back pocket if that's what the council would like to do. All right, you guys all feel good about this? I think we should move forward. No, let's move forward on it, Mark. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, thank you. B vacation time at, for employees. Again, this came up at the last meeting. Um, we didn't resolve it, unfortunately. Um, so what we're looking for is. Um, I know Jenny's got some thoughts on um, how we enter the matrix, and I know Tom's got some interest on how we extend the matrix. So um, we, we'd obviously like to come to a resolution. I know the employees would very much like to. I think we have employees on both ends of the spectrum that would very much like to enter into that 15th day prior to the ninth year, obviously. And I know we have employees who've been here longer than uh, 20 who would love to have five more days. I mean, right. So. Well, well, I started this uh, employee uh, vacation time thing. I talked to a few of the workers, and um, they gave me some ideas. I just think that after 20 years, everything stops. I mean, I feel like a day for every year after that uh, would be good. Uh, maybe some revised uh, amount of days, maybe to 30 years, uh, get the first 20 years to 30, so you get an extra 10 days. But darn, the people that work that long have so much information about the town, we've got to give them some benefit. I know I've worked in a lot of countries that had huge uh, longevity leaves, everything from um, 13 weeks to, you know, four or five months. Jenny, I'm going to defer to you on this. I know you've got some ideas on it. I would like to see, like I said at the last meeting, at five years that that's when they qualify, even six or seven years for the additional week. I just think that there's too much of a gap between those years. We, we have a lot of employees that are in that time period, and I think they should be rewarded an extra week before they've been here nine years. Yeah, I read your, I thought that was pretty good what you put together. Thank you. I think that was excellent. Thank you. And on the other end of it, I, I understand what you're saying, but we also have a lot of employees that are there as well. And staffing issues become a challenge for the chiefs and the department heads. And I'll say what I said at the last meeting again. A lot of these people are turning back in time and losing it at the end of the year already. So now we're increasing our city by... 50% and uh, that would be increased taxes and maybe we could adjust for that. Whatever happens with the uh, increasing of the houses. And another thing to think about, if we do go to paying out like we're discussing in the 2022 budget for unused time or we offer some type of incentive for time that's not used, especially for the people who aren't able to take their time because of staffing issues you have to look at that as well because that's more fiscal responsibility on our part if, if we're giving more time and they can't use it and we're paying it out at the end of the year sure um so what's the answer i i say give them a day till they retire but maybe we ought to start this first time give them um 
20 to 30 years, give them 10 extra days for people that have, then they get to 30 years, then we stop it there. Um, and anybody that already has 30 or 40 years, they got the extra 10 days next year. But we got to give them something. I just think the way it is now, it's just not enough. And we have so many, we don't want to lose anybody here. I don't think it's that big a deal, but. So, Jenny, sorry, Tom. Go ahead. Sorry. Do, do we pay out uh, currently on? No, it's use it or lose it. Or lose now, it. when you go to retire or you leave, there is a percentage that we do pay out at that time. But currently, it's use it or lose it annually on your anniversary date. Now, what we do do is we extend the department heads or chiefs for each department has the ability with approval to extend 30 days past their anniversary date if they haven't been able to use it. But only five days, right? Correct. So how do we move forward? How do we make a decision whether we, we what amount we give them after 20 years? As, it's, so uh, I can't ask for a vote like everybody in favor of right. consensus like you did with the um, side by sides. All right, let's do this. Do people want to give them extra days after 20 years? How do you guys feel in general? I think this is kind of a cultural thing, Tom, where people in, in the United States just aren't used to taking that long vacations. They're, they just, you know, are good with the two weeks and I wouldn't, you know, want to speak for them and say, well, I'm not going to take any extra days. But, you know, with this, with the staffing problems, like with your police department and your fire department, that could get a little bit hairy if you've got a lot of people who have worked those places for a long time. <coughs> then they're gone for a month or two. Do we have reserve firemen? Part time, that's the same thing. And Chief Hilton, you you have reserve policemen. We two, three. three. We're going to seven or something. Six. And how many reserve people do you have, uh, Chief? Robbie. Hmm, okay. Anybody else? Uh, any thoughts? Of I, I I would I would kind of take maybe the recommendation of the clerk treasurer where we had. Can it, I think adjust on the lower end of the spectrum? Um, I, you know, I, I think that you know maybe you know I, I I think that there's definitely value there for you know somebody who's been you know with us you know for a long period of time. You know, maybe maybe it's a small adjustment you know now one or two, and then you know we can revisit that you know next year or something like that. All right, so say we start off easy and person after 20 years gets the next five years and we stop at five and next year we visit it again. Um, does anybody, so we do the lower part and then add five years to the 20 years. Add five years to the 20. Uh, you know, they stop their vacation at 20 years. Oh, right. And then 20 seconds. So you're, so you're saying at 25? Yeah, we'll, we'll just increase that a little bit. Oh, I follow. To, to what? So How many instead days? of increasing it forever, just start out easy and give them five years. And so, if are, are you saying five days? days? Five days. Okay. No, five, yeah, so I mean, you get 20 years, 21 years, you get an extra day, 22 years, you get an extra day. So, so what you're talking about, if you go to 25 and then they get an additional five days, that's going to be 30 total days. That's going to be six weeks, so a essentially a month and a half worth of vacation time. Yeah, I was thinking every year they had it after 20. So if you did 21, you'd get the extra one day. If you did 22 years, you'd get the extra one. That would be two days. Now, keep in mind, too, that they also do get two PTO days plus their sick days plus their comp time. Plus holidays. Plus holidays. I'm be a fireman. I I'm feel be like a we are very, very holiday giving. Days. So, I, and their seniority days. I think. I think. I think too. For you know, I think it might make sense again on the on the lower end to a, maybe a look at adjusting those days. I think. I think then we need to take a serious look at our pay structure 
as we go into you know the budget discussions here at the end of summer. Good. Uh, just a thought, Chris. So, I think what you're trying to say, Jenny. So instead of two to eight years, getting two weeks, two to six years. Exactly. After six years to say ten years, then you get your third week. Exactly. So just kind of bump that all. Exactly. But keep it capped at twenty years, twenty-five days. Right. Okay. I'm in That's favor. My of that. recommendation, because it's like what Chul said. I mean. We keep giving, and people can be able to take a week, a month off if they've been here with us. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I want to come work for Pato Incorporated. <laughs> and a is, good it business. is it possible to restrict the number, the, the amount of time you can take off consecutively to avoid that? Our policy actually mandates that the department head will look at the um, staffing and and vacation time is only allowed if staffing. That's discretionary. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I think we had enough. Let's um, let's have the everybody in favor of doing the lower end. I think everybody's in favor of that. Well, we'll I, what we'll do is we'll work with the clerk treasurer's office and town manager's office to kind of give you a new matrix uh, for consideration um, to incorporate in the handbook. And then we'll revisit this next year. We'll kind of have a bigger think about it. Mm -hmm. we, the management team, just to, to let you know, the management team's been working with TAF Law. We are in the process, almost completed, with bringing you an updated policy handbook because this is 12 yeah. years old, and we've been working to get that completed. So hopefully, every time we, we think we're done, something else pops <laughs> exactly. up. Like <laughs> exactly. And so, all right. So we kind of feel okay about the lower end of general consensus. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we have a general consensus. Let's work with the lower end. You're welcome. So now the next thing is C, electronic meetings and signatures, town manager. Under House Bill 1437, um, council, of course, this has all been extended by the governor recently. We, we got 30 more days of, of uh, an executive order. But uh, when this all does expire, um, and I know there are some things that we would still be held to right now, but... For us to hold electronic meetings, um, there are several restrictions we have to meet. Um, and uh, the biggest one being we have to provide our own ordinance stating that we are willing to meet electronically, we're willing, willing to meet those restrictions. And really what I'm looking for is consensus from the council uh, to draft an ordinance that allows you to meet electronically when necessary. Uh, you have to, there are several restrictions. You cannot, you cannot do electronic meetings more than twice in a row. Um, they, they have, you have to be able to be seen and heard. Uh, the public has to be able to see you, uh, which we have obviously the ability to do that. Um, Joel, I know I'm probably missing some other important well, aspects. When of you it. have an electronic meeting, while that is allowable, the language says that you need to have 50% here. So at least three of you will have to be present here in order for the meeting to go on. So a quorum has to exist here at the town hall or wherever you're going to have your meeting. And then others can be allowed to participate electronically. So long as they can be seen, I think your the system that you guys used over the time uh, of COVID allows people to see them. Communication is simultaneous with everybody so I think that will work and we can draft the ordinance but if you don't have three here then it's a no quorum and you don't have a meeting so it's electronic participation, participation. not electronic meeting Correct. I'm, I'm in favor of that so basically how I read it is that uh, if some of us they all like to come to the meetings we're mostly here all the time uh, you get a death in the family or a wedding somewhere and they go four of us are here and that person's out or they went on vacation, we can still have them in the meeting. They can still vote, correct? So I think that's a good idea. How does the other people feel? Any other talk on that? Uh, well, Time is getting short. I'll go quick. I'll, I'll be the uh, dissenter here, I guess. Um, are you, you're talking about an ordinance that would allow us to do this once the executive order expires. Okay. Yes. Uh, just my uh, not-so-humble opinion, uh, we ran for elected office. Our meetings are two times a month. I think it's good for the people to see us. I think we should be here. Okay, in general, do we have a consensus? Uh, 
We'd like to have that. So what if you can guys we do? can get we'll, that drafted for us, that'd be we'll great. We'll draft the, an ordinance with a policy, and then it'll be up for consideration by the council. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second with a five-minute break. <laughs> okay, motion to adjourn. I have a motion and a second. Everybody's in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Work you. studies closed. We're going to start the meeting. Four and a half minutes.